Good evening, and welcome to Slideshow. I'm your host, Taryn Boylan, and apparently I sound like this now. Tonight, we're going to shift gears from our usual AI hijinks. Instead, I'm going to show you no less than 10 guaranteed side hustles to legally make a ridiculous amount of cash using generative AI. And the best part is, you can do this in just a few hours a week with almost no effort on your part. You will not believe the incredible income potential. Sorry, hang on. Yes, is this the weird action figures guy? Uh, I guess I am. I kind of wear a lot of hats. Unfortunately, you caught me at a bad time. I'm in the middle of a show right now. A show? What exactly are you showing? Oh, hey, I recognize you. You're the turtleneck guy from that overwrought 1970s music video back in episode 4. If you say so, a reliable source told me you had some very naughty dolls. Subjective playmates, I believe they're called. I'm afraid many of the really naughty ones are already sold out. And that's subversive playthings. More action figures, more action fun. Just how subversive are we talking? Uh, fairly subversive. Impress me. I'm calling on behalf of a client with considerably deep pockets. I was really not planning on doing this until the season finale, but okay. Warning. The following segment has been rated R by the Motion Picture Association of America. Here are the top 20 naughtiest subversive playthings. Number 20, Daddy Issues Dorothy. Number 19, Whiskey Dick. Number 18, The Silver Beaver. Number 17, Wardrobe Malfunction Last. Number 16, Naughty Schoolgirl in Need of a Proper Spanking. Number 15, The Human Merkin. Number 14, Tommy the Chronic Masturbator. Number 13, One Seriously Fucked Up Clown. Number 12, Panty Sniffer 5000. Number 11, Freakishly Short Refractory Period Teen. Now here's the top 10 naughtiest subversive playthings. Number 10, Labia Majora. Number nine, Lord Fuck a Duck. Number eight, your super secret special lady. Number seven, Harry Taint. Number six, the amazing pussy lady. Number five, the angry clitoris. Number four, keep fucking that chicken man. Number three, stereotypical American male sex fantasy. Number two, the pussy that grabbed back. And the number one naughtiest subversive plaything is Namaste, motherfucker! That seems like a good way to lose YouTube subscribers. <laughs> what the hell was that? That's something I'm working on for a future episode, maybe even for next season. Now about that client of yours, just how deep are their pockets? Unfathomably deep. As for their identity, they prefer to remain anonymous at this time. But I still don't quite understand. Just exactly who are you again? Uh, I'm Taryn Boylan. That's a rather unusual name. Nonetheless, it's my real name. But what are you really? That's a question I've been asking myself quite a lot lately. What you see is a de-aged digital avatar of my actual self. The base image was created in Microsoft Bing Image Creator, then face-swapped using DeepSwap AI. I do set extension using generative fill in Adobe Photoshop and use a synthetic voice named Liam from Eleven Labs. It's animated. Well. Sort of, using a service called DID. I understood 0% of that, but it sounds like a great deal of work. Why not just use your own likeness and voice? Yeah, this is what I really look and sound like. You're better off with the other guy. You can't tell right now, but I'm shuddering. And we're on a show right now? I'm struggling to understand that part. In seven episodes, I guess I've never explained it fully. I've got time. The basic premise is that it's the year 2024, it seems more like the 70s, possibly earlier. Trust me. In the main timeline, it's the summer of 2024. These are the early days of generative AI, and it's both an exciting and a terrifying time for creative artists. I've heard rumors to that effect. So I'm trying to play around with various AI tools while still producing something fun and entertaining. 
Entertaining may be stretching it a bit, but I'm starting to grasp the concept. It sounds like experimentation is a major part of what you're doing. Absolutely. And as we learned in Episode 4, the experiments aren't always entirely successful. Still, it's nice to show people in a relatable way what's possible today, while also knowing the techniques will appear crude only a few months from now. Can you provide an example? I couldn't have asked for a better setup. So, what did you think? I think it's incredibly self-indulgent, but I thank you for your time. I'll talk with my client and get back to you. Sounds good. And speaking of self-indulgent, want to see pictures of my dog? You say that like I have a choice.
He was everything you told me he was, and he doesn't suspect a thing. Excellent work. Now we can proceed to phase two. Oh, to be continued. 